What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are back with another Detroit Lions free agent type of video. So last week, we talked about two potential free agents that the Lions could show interest in, in Marcus Peters and Shaq Leonard. This week, we're going to talk about another one. But this player is a former Lion and a former Defensive Rookie of the Year. So let's get it started. Welcome, everybody, to our video. Glad you guys are here. And yes, man, we are back with another free agent type of video. This video should not be super long, but this is something that I really wanted to talk about. And the reason being is, number one, a lot of Lions fans have been very excited about this. There hasn't really anything been directly tied to this guy signing with the Detroit Lions, and I think overall, mainly where he ends up signing is probably going to have a lot more to do with what he's actually who he's actually interested in signing with versus are the Lions interested in signing this player, okay? It seems like it's going to have a lot more to do with the player and where he wants to go more than anything. So even if the Lions are interested, let's just say hypothetically they were interested in the player that we're going to talk about today, doesn't necessarily mean that the Lions would actually land this player because, again, I think a lot of this is going to come back to where he actually wants to go. But I know there's been a lot of Lions fans. I've seen the X accounts that have been replying to the tweet that has put out there that this player is going to sign soon with his team for the remainder of the season for the playoff push and there's a lot of Lions fans in there that are hyped they're like yo that could be us there's also a lot of other NFL fans in there as well but because he's a former Lion and I don't think we've ever actually talked about this player specifically I think it's always been like something that's been out there in the past when he signed like this late in the season but I don't think it's something that we've actually really dug into and today I wanted to do that. We're going to be talking about former Detroit Lion, the Donican Sue. Hey, look, his name is difficult to say, so I'm going to leave right there. We're just going to go Sue for the rest of the video, okay? That's what we all know him as as well. By the way, I didn't know they actually made a soup after the guy in Nebraska. I didn't, I didn't know that was a thing. Sue, we're going to talk about Sue. Everybody knows this man, all right? Everybody knows this guy because he was like the heartbeat of that crazy good defensive line the Lions ultimately had together at one point. Now, he left in free agency signed a big deal with the Miami Dolphins but at one point there we had one of the nastiest defensive lines in the NFL across the board between Sue they added fairly to that mix then obviously you had guys like Vandenbosch and here comes Chris, Chris Averill the depth that they built within there it was one of the nastiest defensive fronts in football that led their defense and now once again he's looking to sign with the contender and the reports that we have they could be true could not but it seems like this is probably going to be true is that he's going to be making his decision soon on where he wants to sign for the rest of this season and through the playoff push obviously his main goal is he wants to go win a Super Bowl. I've seen him on a sports talk show where he specifically brought up a team like the Baltimore Ravens who had reached out to him, and that's where he's interested, is landing with a team that has an opportunity, that's in a position right now to contend, that he feels has an opportunity to win the Super Bowl. And of course, we look at our situation, we're like, hey, we're 9-3. and three. This isn't new, right, in terms of we've signed a couple of veterans. Now, it's a little bit different. I think the, the, I think Sue has a little bit of a different kind of feel to it than anything, but we signed the Bruce Irvin, who we saw at Impact this past week. We've added veterans to the practice squad that we haven't seen yet but we know that they're there and they can step in and perform if we need them to not just adding young players so today I want to talk about Sue and really for me the reason I want to do this is because I don't even really know how this guy's played now he hasn't played yet this season so kind of like Bruce Irvin in that sense I don't know what he's looked like this year they'd probably have to bring him in for a workout but I wanted to go back and look one last time we saw him on the field with the Philadelphia Eagles last season you go back a year before that Tampa Bay I really focused on Philadelphia because I wanted to get the latest from him but I did watch a little bit of the Tampa Bay as well I just want to get a sense of what is this still guy still got in the tank I mean he's pushing 37 years old what is he still have I have no idea I've never really focused on Sue since he's left the Detroit Lions so with that I started to dive into this and I got some takeaways and really the overall discussion here is should the Lions be interested in signing Sue now should he be interested in the Lions I would say yes but obviously that's something that he's going to decide so we'll leave it right there if you're like me you're always trying to improve your resume from adding education to experience maybe that's to help you with the career path that you're interested in or potentially help expand your opportunities down the road or maybe it's just for that job listing that pops up and when you read what they're looking for you notice that there may be a little bit of a lack of experience there and that could come in a lot of different ways but if that's specifically with the lack of a degree I completely understand where you are coming from if you're like me and maybe you've done things a little bit out of order you didn't take kind of the natural path of high school to immediately going into college or maybe you are at that natural path but you're looking for an opportunity to potentially get that degree that you've wanted if you feel like your experience Experience is holding you back from pursuing the career you want, then I'm excited to tell you about today's sponsor, 
Southern New Hampshire University. SNHU has one of the largest accredited nonprofit online degree offerings in the country. I want to talk to you about their social media marketing program. This program, you'll learn how to leverage the social media to engage consumers, build loyalty, drive business. It's a great program if you're interested in doing something like I'm doing, a content creator, a community manager, or a social media strategist. You'll also learn other vital digital marketing skills such as SEO, search engine optimization, and how to run advertising campaigns. What I love about SNHU is it's radically affordable. Their online tuition rates are some of the lowest in the nation. SNHU was voted one of the country's most innovative universities by US News and World Report. So go to snhu.edu slash dose of Dion, also linked in the top of my description. See what the current average annual salary for a social media marketing program is and request free information about the program. I know for me personally, I've done that with their sports management program. It's something that I'm very interested in getting into and I've done things a little bit in a different order. So that's something that I've personally looked into and it's an area where I've requested that free information. When you request information, a real person will hop on a call and discuss how the program can benefit you personally. It only takes one click to find your calling. A lot of times these signings aren't going to be massive deals, not this late in the season. It's going to be a one-year deal. Usually the cap it isn't massive to the point where you know, you're know you struggling to make it work. However, I think it is worth noting that when you look around the league, most teams don't have a lot of cap space to spend right now. Lions fall right into that mix. $2.8 million in cap space according to Over the Cap. That's not a ton to spend. Also, you look around at some of the competitors. Philadelphia Eagles last season, $3.38 million. Baltimore, who we did bring up specifically, does have more cap space currently listed at $6.4 million according to Over the Cap. And then, of course, you have a team like San Fran. And the only reason I bring up San Fran here is this. Number one, they're the favorites to win the Super Bowl, I believe, right now. But number two, they also have his favorite defensive line coach, the former Detroit Lions defensive line coach that went to San Francisco. They currently, according to Over the Cap, have like $38 million. Now, next season, they don't have much at all because I guess a lot of guys are under contract next year. It's insane, but yeah, I guess if that's legit, they have a lot of money to spend this year if they wanted to add a one-year deal. So financially, I don't think they'll have any issues there. Most teams don't have a lot of cap space, but I think it is worth noting that the Lions don't have a ton right now, so that could be a little bit of a hiccup, especially if they don't want to throw a void ear onto a guy that they're signing literally for the stretch run only. Something to keep in mind, but we know that he's pretty much always healthy in his entire career, so you can kind of bank on that. Now, what he's been recently, specifically last season, is really a 20-snap type of guy. I mean, some games you'll push over 20, some games he's under 20, but from the end of the regular season into the playoffs with Philadelphia, where they played in the Super Bowl, he was kind of a 20-snap type of guy. He wasn't your starter, but he would absolutely get snaps, he would absolutely rotate, and with Philadelphia, you saw him play a little bit more of kind of the four eye in that defense. I think with Tampa Bay, you saw a little bit more of the three tech look, but he kind of worked between the two, shading an offensive guard, working more inside of an offensive tackle. Sometimes on pass downs, he kicked to nose tackle right over the center. He play a zero technique. So we've seen some flexibility specifically within the last two years. Where I like him the best, honestly, though, and the reason I think it's really worth talking about this topic right now, as of the time I'm recording this video, is because of Aleem McNeil's injury. Aleem McNeil, who it sounds like he could absolutely miss this week against Chicago. Hopefully he doesn't go super beyond that, but he's played about 70% of the defensive snaps for the Lions. He's been massive for us this year, and I brought this up yesterday, and then I see this report come out today, so I'm like, it's perfect time to talk about it, that the interior defensive line, to me, is the area defensively where I don't feel like we're getting enough pressure. Now, with that, Aleem McNeil is the guy that can get pressure on the inside, but without Aleem McNeil, now I'm really like, yo, I don't know where we're getting any pressure. Outside of obvious pass downs where you can kick a pass rusher in the interior, when you're talking about first and second down dies that can transition from playing to run, rushing to pass, play action sets. I don't really know where we get much of that outside of Ali McNeil. We know Bugs has had flashes and he was inactive, so he's a guy that could be activated this week if there is no Ali McNeil. Obviously, you have Levi, who hasn't really done a ton. He hasn't been consistently on the field. He, stylistically, you would hope, could play kind of that role, that three-technique role for this defense, give us some pressure, but it hasn't really been there in the regular season. So there's that aspect. He might be activated as well. He's been a healthy scratch, but hasn't really been there. So if you take Ali McNeil out of the mix, now I step back and say, okay, I don't hate what we have against 
against the run, right? Obviously, at Brad Brodick Martin, you have a nose tackle. Well, Hannah's not going to give you a ton there. I like how Benito Jones has played the run for the most part this season, but I don't see a lot of pass rush. And can Sue give me a little bit more of that? And that's what we're going to talk about in today's video is what does he still have? These are the notes that I have from really the four to five games that I've went through so far of Nadonik and Sue recently, specifically with the Philadelphia Eagles, a little bit with Tampa Bay, but specifically with the Philadelphia Eagles. First off, you talk about the ability to get off the line of scrimmage. Now, with Sue, I think what really stands out is the reactive quickness off the ball. Again, we're not talking about what this was in 2010. I'm talking about right now or the most recent that we've seen in 2022. His reactive quickness off the line of scrimmage, usually pretty good timing. I would say that's actually a good aspect of his game, his ability to get off the ball with good timing. But where he makes it really work to me is his ability to maintain really good leverage through his get off, specifically if he's trying to attack a single gap or if it's more of a pass rush situation. His ability to maintain leverage off the line of scrimmage with good timing off the line. I don't think you get an extremely explosive burst or he doesn't cover a ton of ground off the line of scrimmage, but it's usually good timing. I mean, you'll get some jumps offside, but it's usually good timing that sets up him up really well. As a pass rusher, I don't love it. Okay, statistically speaking, you look at it in 2022, he had nine pressures in the regular season with Philadelphia on just over 100 snaps, according to Pro Football Focus. Then in the playoffs, four total pressures on 27 pass snaps. So, you know, that's like, what, one every seven snaps? I don't love him as a pass rusher from what I've seen most recently, but there are still ways he can win. First off, if you have him more towards the interior working on centers or if he gets double teamed in the interior, especially on passing downs, one thing that you like is the awareness. Okay, he plays with good awareness. I think one of his best aspects, pass rusher and run defender, is his ability to find the football. He plays with really good vision on the ball carrier, really good scheme recognition as a run defender, but also the ability to just find and have a nose for the football. Whether that's a design, twist, loop, stunt, whatever that may be, or if it's just that he has his eyes and he's able to find the ball, I think he does that really well. And you'll see at times he'll drop into kind of that spiral, which you get a lot from those interior guys. Other times you have to worry about his ability to get in passing lanes with his hands. I think having vision for the quarterback is is one of the best aspects that he still has as a pass rusher. Now, where he's good as a pass rusher to me comes back to the hand placement. So we talk about good reactive quickness off the line of scrimmage. You tie that along with, I think, pretty good hand usage as well. Specifically, the ability to win early, win off the line of scrimmage early, get his hands in your chest, and then play with fast hands throughout the rep. One of, I think, the most overlooked aspects, especially now in this game, is his ability to play with balance. I think this really shows up more so as a run defender, but because of the balance that he plays with off the line of scrimmage, that's where you start to open up some of those abilities to go from playing the run to rushing the passer because of the balance that he plays with into that first contact. When we talk about run defense, one of the things that I like, and I think you saw some good examples against Indy, for example, here working on their right guard, because of that quickness off the line, but also his ability to play with balance, you can see that he's able to find a way to get an edge. He can kind of force the guard to overextend from where he's aligned at pre-snap, but then how he launches into contact while staying balanced at the same time, getting into the chest of the offensive lineman then his ability to feel where the edge is against the offensive lineman and get that way with really good balance where he can get the offensive lineman off balance and he can stay balanced as a pass rusher but I think the biggest thing for me is the hand usage he does a nice job of keeping himself clean fast hands you'll see a lot of swipes you also get a lot of kind of second moves off the first one where you might get a swipe rip through you might get a swim over top you get a you get a little bit of variety that he continue to work through as a pass rusher now where I think he lacks a little bit especially now probably is that lateral quickness. I think it shows up both as a run defender and a pass rusher. I don't see a ton of lateral burst to consistently get an edge, right? He can get you off balance and win early on the play, but to consistently get an edge as a pass rusher, I think he lacks some of that lateral burst. Also, not a ton of flexibility in their sense of closing as a pass rusher, or even, again, just kind of dipping and getting around an offensive lineman, right? Making himself a smaller target. I don't see a lot of that within his game. Tie that along with, I didn't see a lot of bull rush wins either. I think a lot of that comes back to leverage. I like it off the line, but it doesn't seem to have an ability to continue and maintain and really get a good knockback and continuous walk back into the pocket. It's more so to me about creating an edge, staying balanced, and winning kind of early on the play, getting offensive linemen to overextend and winning with his hands. Now, trust me, this guy is still extremely powerful in the upper body, but I think this play shows a lot of the things that you like. Vision on quarterback, also pretty good get off as well. There's a good reactive quickness. And then early hands, gets in the chest, controls the block, vision on the quarterback, being able to work off the block and then pursue on the play and we know that man he just likes to hit people that ability to get a step towards the outside with some of the lateral burst especially if he's already engaged with an offensive lineman but then the other aspect of that is i really like his effort and this showed up both tampa bay both philadelphia the effort late in plays i mean
mean, I think you're going to have issues closing and finishing on the quarterback. I love his vision, but just change direction becomes a little bit of an issue, especially in space. But I think he does play with really good effort. He continues to work his way into the play. Now, run defense is really the key for me. And if you're looking at, you know, if you look at PFF, how they grade him, they like him more as a run defender than a pass rusher. And I think when you watch him as a run defender, it's a little bit weird because I think at his best, I would rather have him closer to the ball, closer to the ball on the line of scrimmage. Reason being is this. I talked about the lateral quickness. I just don't think it's there to play further away from the football, work against tackles consistently. You see it on zone plays. You believe just kind of run away from him. I don't think you have that consistent lateral quickness to work like that or also at times get engaged with an offensive lineman and also be able to work off that offensive lineman, stack and shed, make plays on the football. So I like him closer to the ball. Now, I don't want him as a nose tackle that's playing over the center over and over and over. I don't love that, but maybe more so in that three tech working on guards more consistently I like that matchup I also think he's very capable of dealing with double teams you didn't see a ton of this with Philly in the typical sense of a three technique but I think he's very capable of handling business here again coming back to his balance on contact the ability to get into the chest play with a lot of force as well in the upper body on first contact and hold his ground that way I think what serves him so well against the run to me is his awareness his recognition of blocking schemes okay it's very quick to read zone blocking scheme I can split that gap I can get upfield and I need to sit down very quick to recognize what the offensive line is doing to position himself early that's something that he's done well going back to when he was a rookie he still does that really well of course and that's not going to go anywhere so I think a lot for him is ability to diagnose what's happening and I think the closer you get him to the ball the better I don't want him over the center but a little bit away from the tackles to me can sort of minimize maybe a little bit of the lack of athleticism laterally where at times you'll see him just get completely caught behind plays so he has that ability to kind of play to me a little bit of the gap and a half roll okay again I don't see some of maybe the drive and knockback power to continue throughout the rep or even some of the continuous leverage but I see it into the initial contact so he has that ability to get into contact early play well off the snap get into a really balanced situation early and then he's able to kind of transition off that so schematically speaking I think he stylistically could fit into playing kind of that gap and a half roll you can have him work upfield and that's more of kind of the recognition more so than anything to me there and it's pretty good get off I think you have an excellent example here against the New York Giants where he's able to work through multiple gaps as a defensive lineman where he can kind of press inside initially then he's able to rework himself play balanced on the play laterally rework against the guard get himself back outside and make a play on the football all to me when I look at this one it's a little bit different than maybe say the linebacker position we talked about a Shaq Leonard because one Lions love the depth that they have there and if anything they need to give more snaps to Jalen Reese Mabin okay he played so well last week and I think Dan Campbell touched on that I think he will get some snaps but also Alex Anzalone sounds like he could potentially return this weekend which would be amazing Jack Campbell had a strong game so overall I think they're very optimistic about that group defensive tackle specifically when we look at our defense I think we have the personnel it's just right now it maybe hasn't been there specifically with a Levi like this would be the great opportunity if Aleem can't play to step in be that dude but the consistency hasn't really been there with Levi and he hasn't gotten consistent snaps but this may be that opportunity for him and it probably seems like the Lions will give him that opportunity if he signed a guy like Sue he's probably not playing this weekend anyway but again this isn't someone that's going to be the answer on the interior, but he can give you some interior pass rush. When I was going through kind of like my early grades from just going through some of these games, I like him the best as a run defender. I think you could argue he's slightly above average the last time we saw him against a run. I think he's more in the average to maybe even slightly below average, but um, for what we could use, I think it could actually be an added value because of his body type as a pass rusher. So I think overall, like he could help you, but this isn't something that if you didn't sign here, I'd be like, oh dang, we really missed out. Like I don't see that I didn't see that okay and I think if he was signed here I don't think it'd be like a complete game changer but it's something where you look at this team and what we have and where the kind of the trust level has seemingly been with some of those interior guys I think that it's different than like the linebacker position this scenario where the Lions could legitimately just look at what they have and say this could be good to add I think the Lions should be interested obviously the financials will play into that I think this has a lot more to do with where Sue is interested than anything where he's interested in signing but I think the Lions should be interested in signing a guy like Sue and it just it would be amazing to have him back in Lions uniform the amount of old jerseys that would come out just for that would be awesome this would be a great I mean if we could get a home playoff game with Sue here oh my gosh that place would go nuts I mean it's just it's a beautiful matchup I mean it absolutely is I'd love to have him I'll never say no to adding this piece if it was a real possibility but with that being said do I think he will 
Honestly, not really. I, I don't really think he'll sign here. I think we could use it. I don't think he'd be like a complete difference maker. I don't see that, but I think he could be an added value, okay? I don't think he'd take us over the top or something. I think he could be an added value for where we're at currently right now, especially with the Aline McNeil injury. So with that being said, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I know most people will be like, yes, yeah, sign the guy. I get that. I'm with it. If we sign him, I'd be very excited, but I'll leave it right there. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I'm out.